Hello, third graders, and welcome to session 18 of our narrative writing study. Today, we're going to be working on revising your endings, and we're going to learn from published authors to see what they have done in the past and see if we can borrow some of their ideas. A great ending can make a good story great. Have you ever watched a movie with an awesome ending? What movie are you thinking of? Do you think the ending made that movie even better? Now think of a movie that has a really bad ending. Kind of ruined the movie, didn't it? One of my favorite movies, I like scary movies, and one of my favorite movies is a scary movie. And the ending was so bad that it couldn't even be my favorite movie anymore. It had to be knocked down because the ending was so bad. It's the last thing that you remember about someone's story. So that's why endings are very important. Our goal today is to learn how to make a great ending. We are going to learn about endings from a mentor text titled, Come on, Rain. Listen to this example of a great ending. I found it on YouTube. I hug Mama hard, and she hugs me back. The rain has made us new. As the clouds move off, I trace the drips on Mama's face. Everywhere, everyone, everything is Misty Limbs springing back to life. We sure did get a soaking, Mama, I say, and we head home, purely soothed, fresh as dew, turning toward the first sweet rays of the sun. I'm going to read that again, and then I'm going to point out some of the beautiful things that Karen Hesse is doing here in her book. Let's start with the ending over. I hug Mama hard, and she hugs me back. The rain has made us new. As the clouds move off, I trace the drips on Mama's face. Everywhere, everyone, everything, is Misty Limbs springing back to life. We sure did get a soaking, Mama, I say, and we head home, purely soothed, fresh as dew, turning toward the first sweet rays of the sun. Now, I'm going to point out some amazing things that Karen Hesse does here. And of course, she is a professional author. You guys are third graders and not professional authors. But there are some things that we can steal from Karen Hesse to make our writing even better. First, her use of action, right? Just like in our leads, if we want our reader to be interested in our story, we can include action. I hug mama hard and she hugs me back. That's action. And then towards the end, they are heading home, purely soothed, fresh as dew, turning towards the sweet rays of sun. So she has lots of action in her endings. It's not like super extreme action, right? It's not like, yeah, we won the soccer game. But she's showing us how she's feeling, right? Soothed, relaxed, fresh as dew. Another really great thing that Karen Hesse has in this um, ending is that she has dialogue. We sure did get a soaking, Mama, I say. It has exactly what the author says. And that's always really interesting for readers. So that's another idea. You can have dialogue. Just again, just like your lead. Action, dialogue. Another compliment that I would give Karen Hesse is her use of metaphor. Excuse me, I'm going to change that as simile. She uses simile, so she uses figurative language and descriptive language. If we look up here, she tells us about the drips on Mama's face, misty limbs springing back to life, and then her simile is down here, fresh as dew. So she's comparing herself and her mother to do, fresh as do. 
if you really want to impress me, you can add a metaphor or a simile in your ending. Extra cool bonus points. Let's go back to our presentation here. So again, what made this ending awesome? Action, dialogue, descriptive language, simile slash metaphor. Okay, so today you're going to get out your drafts of your long story that you've been working on. So it can be the story that you started at the beginning of the unit, or it can be a story that you really like and have been working on. Just get a draft out, looking for the important parts. Your ending needs to relate back to those important parts. So if you're looking at the heart of your story, think about how you can relate your ending to the heart of the story. Go ahead and work on your endings and try to make them relate to the important parts of the story that you have already written. And you can write more than one ending. Remember when we had our leads assignment, we had to write two. So it'd be a good idea for you to practice a few different ways of writing, um, writing your ending. Okay, and here's our anchor chart, just to go over again. This is all the stuff we've been doing. So creating a great ending. It can contain action. It can contain dialogue. I'm actually going to add a few things here. What else did we say I could add? And contain descriptive language. Descriptive language. So the script is wrong. <gasps> it can contain descriptive language. It can, oops. It can contain figurative language. Metaphor or simile or really any kind of figurative language. Okay. Remember, just like your lead, your ending should be exciting so that your readers are left with something really fun um, in their brain while they are remembering your story. Okay. So today you're going to create an ending. See if you can have it. Um, include action, dialogue, descriptive language, or figurative language. Okay, that is your goal today. If you can incorporate two or three of these things and make a really great ending, bonus school points. All right, friends, have fun creating your exciting endings. We are almost done with our narrative writing unit. We will write a final draft and turn it in for a final grade. Have a great day, friends. Bye.